What's up guys, I'm the Viking Viking, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hello, and you join me in the kind of mood to talk about design. So let's get on with it. This is so important, I'm going to put my sleeves up. So what goes into designing a custom motorbike? Well, you've got two things to consider. You've got form and you've got function. And for most bikers, function is incredibly important and form kind of comes secondary, but you can mesh the two together and make something great, which is why custom bikes exist. And it starts from the ground up. And the first decision that you're gonna make when you're designing a custom bike is what kind of wheels you're gonna be running. Now for Project Outlaw, I'm running spokes. And the reason I'm running spokes is because that's what the Virago comes with as standard. And a lot of custom bikes, you could get away with, you know, doing solid single piece rims. You could get away with doing split piece wheels. You could get away with spokes. You could get away with, those like rimless ghost things that some bikes use that look really cool. However, because of the way that the shaft drive on the Virago goes, and because it's a drum brake on the rear, it would take quite a lot of designing and quite a lot of engineering to make something different. So I stuck with the spokes. It suits the style of bike, it works for what I want, so I stayed with it. But once you've decided on that, once you start moving up the bike, things become a lot more subjective. Now I'm of the opinion that a lot of people get the design choices wrong when they're customising a bike and one of the biggest things that I've noticed is angling your bars wrong. Function says put your bars where they're comfortable for you to ride. However, form also dictates that there should be a flow to your bike. When you look at custom motorbikes that come from the big shops, they always have a very distinctive line to them. You could draw a flowing smooth line from the front of the bike to the back of the bike and it would work. And I think where a lot of people go wrong is in positioning the bars. And what happens is you have your forks coming up from your front wheel at this sort of angle, say, and people put the bars straight up. And I've noticed people who put ape hangers on the bikes do this a lot. And they're straight up, which gives you a weird angle and it makes the whole front of the bike looks stunted, almost as if it's been in a crash. So what I have done with Project Outlaw and what I think most people should do is angle the bars further back than they think they need them so that the flow of the fork goes into the flow of the bars as well. Now your bars can come up and round and pull back slightly. That's what mine do. They have a one to two inch pull back on them, which makes it a much more comfortable ride. But because it flows with the bar riser, it works. You're keeping that arc going. Now, there are ways around this. One of the coolest ways I've seen people do it is by putting a Springer front end on. If you put a Springer front end on, it gives the bike a much more mechanical look. Everything is open, everything can be seen. And by doing that, having a more severe angle onto your bars actually gives it more of a mechanical look and looks better than keeping the flow smooth because you've got these intersecting angles with the Springer front end. Then it works really well. But if you're going for sort of a cool, slick, customised look, you've got to keep that flow going. Now, obviously Project Outlaw is based on the California club scene bikes, uh, Outlaw bike style, uh, that was very popular in the mid-2000s. A lot of a lot of the club riders have now transitioned onto batwing fairings or gone fairings. I'm sticking with the bikini fairing, and the reason I'm doing that is function and form. Personally, I think the bikini fairing looks nicer than a gauntlet fairing. And from a functional side of things, because of the position that I end up on the bike, because I'm quite tall and it's quite a small bike comparative to something like a Dyna or a Goldwing or a Valkyrie or something of that nature. Compared to those kind of bikes, the Virago is quite short and quite small, which means that my position on the bike is much more forward and much more upright than it would be on one of those. Which means that having the bikini fairing on the front, it brings the wind up off my chest and my shoulders and over the top of my head. It makes motorway riding much more comfortable and it cuts through the air better, which means that I get slightly different handling to standard. It was a bit of a shock the first time I rode it with the fairing on, how much it made a difference, but it does make a difference. Now that's not to say that putting a gauntlet fairing or a batwing on is a bad choice. If you like the way that that looks and it works for your riding style, then by all means, rock on with it, but for me, I like the way that, that fairing works. And then you continue your design choices with the flow of the bike with your tank. Now, for the vast majority of bikes, you can get away with a standard tank. However, because I've put that fairing on and because I've raised the handlebars up, 
The Virago tank looks flat and squashed now compared to how it would look on a standard bike because when the Virago's standard it's got a much different looking front end and it flows much better into that smaller peanut tank. That said, I still don't agree with the design choices of the tank having the filler cap off to one side. It drives me up the wall, but that's just me. So as we saw last week, I've got a new sort of Iron 883 48 custom style tank that I'm in the process of doing. And a bit later on in this video, I'm gonna get on to how to design graphics for tanks and things of that nature, but for now we'll just carry on. So going back to the flow, the line that you're building needs to go from your bars and then it will inevitably have to come back down the bike. So ensuring that that smooth curve carries on is really important. So going straight from there, you go into your seat. Now again, on the Virago, the standard is a two seat system. It's got your main seat and then a pillion seat behind it. And again, on a standard Virago, that looks great. It looks fine, it works, but this isn't a standard Virago anymore that I'm building. So I went on eBay, I bought a Granucci single piece seat that's gonna get recovered. It looks a lot nicer in my personal opinion, it flows better with the bike. And then you get onto the rear mud guard, which I've smoothed out to bring the whole thing down. But then I've added a bit of British bobber flair to it by having the rear light mounted quite high on the rear mudguard, meaning that it's quite a prominent piece and it's quite show-off-ish compared to the flowing lines that come as standard, which was a conscious design choice to give the bike that little bit of Brit-style flair because, you know, as much as I love the California club look, I don't live in California, I live in North Wales, and I wanna incorporate a little bit of that British style to the bike. Once you've got all that sorted out, you've got your lines fixed in your mind, you know exactly where everything's gonna flow into, you then have to decide on paint and graphics. Now with Project Outlaw, I had something very firm in my mind from the offset, and that is what I consider the three big cliches of custom cruiser building. Flames, skulls, and spikes. You cannot go to a custom bike show without seeing a bike with a flame paint job or a skull paint job or covered in chrome skulls that are just stuck here, there and everywhere or having spikes on every exposed nut and bolt that's on the bike. It's incredibly cliched in my opinion and at this point it looks tacky which is why I've purposely gone I am not putting any skulls, I'm not putting any flames, I'm not putting any spikes on this bike, even though I can see parts of it that would look really kind of cool with them, it's too big of a cliche for me. What I've done instead is I've spent a while designing some custom graphics for on the tank. Now, you don't have to put graphics on the bike. And a really cool example of that, and I wish I had a photo of it, was a Triumph Bonneville I saw at Bike Fest, not this past year, but the year before. And it was this really deep, rich, high metallic green and it looked fantastic they'd taken all the triumph logos off it they just shot it straight with this green it had the black and silver engine dark green tank dark green tins it looked awesome and if that's something that you're into then by all means rock on with it make it look amazing and if you can pull off a paint job like that you don't necessarily need really high-end graphics you can just do the paint job and the bike will look amazing that said i purposely want graphics on my bike and i want to incorporate norse and viking designs onto that with a little bit of japanese flair thrown in so i found this image of a celtic raven i found some other stuff with some runes and related things mix and mashed it all together in photoshop neatened up all the lines that i could and then i added yamaha in a rune-esque type font and it looks really cool and that's what's going to go onto the sides of my tins because i've got these great big flat sides that i can do graphics on so i'm going to utilize that space likewise i've got this flat area here I'm going to try and utilise that with an Odin's mask image that I found online as well. But I have the advantage of having a vinyl cutter, which means that I can cut these images out, I can stick the vinyl on, I can use it as a stencil and it will work really nicely. And not everybody has that kind of advantage. You might have to print your stencil out on paper or cardstock and cut it out with a scalpel and then sellotape it on and use it as a stencil that way. That's perfectly fine. That's you know how I did the original graphics when I first got Project Outlaw before I had the crash. Because at that point I was going for a more 
sort of ratty look because I hadn't done it up yet and I was planning on doing it up over the winter so I just wanted something to differentiate it a bit and if you're doing that style of bike it works really well but I want the really crisp silhouetted style on this bike so that's what I've gone for now your other option is to get a professional airbrusher or if you're artistically talented learning how to airbrush yourself and doing airbrush graphics that way and if that's something that you can do and if that's something that you can afford then go for it because it can look unbelievably good doing it like that but me personally I'm not that talented so I'm sticking with that sort of design for me if you're building a custom bike for you it should speak about you so what I consider cool on a custom bike you might think is tacky and what you think is cool I might think is tacky there's a reason that big companies get graphic designers involved for their MotoGP bikes to figure out the placement of where sponsorship logos should go and the size of them and the color schemes that will work with those sponsorship logos there's a reason why a standard CBR 600 costs two grand less than a Repsol equivalent it's because of that design element. You need to design your bike. And yes, you can follow my ideas about flow, graphic design and everything, but the main thing that you really should be doing is compiling things that interest you that you want to incorporate in your bike. And to do that, you need reference material. And that reference material can come from anywhere. You can have a folder on your phone that you've downloaded loads of pictures of bikes you like the look of into, or you could have a separate hard drive that you can store photos on. Or you can even set yourself up on Pinterest and just save loads of images of the bikes you like so you can quickly reference it and come up with the design yourself. But what I'm saying is you have to design these bikes. You can't just throw a bunch of stuff at a bike and hope that it works. You need an idea, at least in your head, of how you want the flow of the bike to look, the color of the bike to look, and whether or not you're gonna go with graphics. But hey, that's just my opinion, and I could be very wrong. If you disagree with me, leave a comment down below. Tell me where you think I'm going wrong with designing Project Outlaw. I'm probably not gonna actually listen because Project Outlaw is for me, and I'm gonna do what I wanna do with it regardless. But right now I've gotta finish designing the graphics for this tank because hopefully next video we're gonna start painting it and I can bring you along on how to get the best possible finish using just rattle cans. That's right, nothing special, no big sprayer, no compressor, just rattle cans and a lot of elbow grease. And because you've made it to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you 700 awesome points today, so well done. But for now, I've been the Viking Viking. As always, you have been awesome, and I will see you next time. Well